The Pause, Part 3 From Preparation for a Christian Life by Soren Kierkegaard Published in 1850 Translated by Lee M. Hollander in 1923 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Pause, Part 3 He who invites is, then, Jesus Christ in his abasement. It is he who spoke these words of invitation. It is not from his glory that they are spoken. If that were the case, then Christianity were heathendom and the name of christ taken in vain and for this reason it cannot be so but if it were the case that he who is enthroned in glory had said these words come hither as though it were so altogether easy a matter to be clasped in the arms of glory well what wonder then if crowds of men ran to him but they who thus throng to him merely go on a wild goose chase imagining they know who christ is but that no one knows and in order to believe in him one has to begin with his abasement he who invites and speaks these words that is he's whose words they are whereas the same words if spoken by someone else are as we have seen an historic falsification he is the same lowly Jesus Christ, the humble man born of a despised maiden, whose father is a carpenter, related to other simple folk of the very lowest class. The lowly man, who at the same time, which to be sure is like oil poured on the fire, affirms himself to be God. It is the lowly Jesus Christ who spoke these words, and no word of Christ not a single one have you permission to appropriate to yourself you have not the least share in him are not in any way of his company if you have not become his contemporary in lowliness in such fashion that you have become aware precisely like his contemporaries of his warning blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me matthew eleven verse six you have no right to accept Christ's words and then lie him away. You have no right to accept Christ's words and then in a fantastic manner and with the aid of history utterly change the nature of Christ. For the chatter of history about him is literally not worth a fig. It is Jesus Christ in his lowliness who is the speaker. It is historically true that he said these words but so soon as one makes a change in his historic status it is false to say that these words were spoken by him this poor and lowly man then with twelve poor fellows as his disciples all from the lowest class of society for some time an object of curiosity but later on in company only with sinners publicans lepers and madmen for one risked honor life and property or at any rate and that we know for sure exclusion from the synagogue by even letting oneself be helped by him come hither now all ye that labor and are heavy laden ah my friend even if you were deaf and blind and lame and leprous if you which has never been seen or heard before united all human miseries in your misery and if he wished to help you by a miracle it is possible that as is human you would fear more than all your sufferings the punishment which was set on accepting aid from him the punishment of being cast out from the society of other men of being ridiculed and mocked day after day and perhaps of losing your life it is human and it is characteristic of being human were you to think as follows no thank you in that case i prefer to remain deaf and blind and lame and leprous rather than accept aid under such conditions come hither 
come hither all ye that labor and are heavy laden ah come hither lo he invites you and opens his arms ah when a gentlemanly man clad in a silken gown says this in a pleasant harmonious voice so that the words pleasantly resound in the handsome vaulted church a man in silk who radiates honor and respect on all who listen to him ah when a king in purple and velvet says this with the christmas tree in the background on which are hanging all the splendid gifts he intends to distribute why then of course there is some meaning in these words but whatever meaning you may attach to them so much is sure that it is not christianity but the exact opposite something as diametrically opposed to christianity as may well be for remember who it is that invites and now judge for yourself for that you have a right to do whereas men really do not have a right to do what is so often done namely to deceive themselves that a man of such appearance a man whose company every one shuns who has the least bit of sense in his head or the least bit to lose in the world that he well this is the absurdest and maddest thing of all one hardly knows whether to laugh or to weep about it that he indeed that is the very last word one would expect to issue from his mouth for if he had said come hither and help me or leave me alone or spare me or proudly i despise you all we could understand that perfectly but that such a man says come hither to me why i declare that looks inviting indeed and still further all ye that labor and are heavy laden as though such folk were not burdened enough with troubles as though they now to cap all should be exposed to the consequences of associating with him and then finally i shall give you rest what's that he helped them ah i am sure even the most good-natured joker who was contemporary with him would have to say surely that was the thing he should have undertaken last of all to wish to help others being in that condition himself why it is about the same as if a beggar were to inform the police that he had been robbed for it is a contradiction that one who has nothing and has had nothing informs us that he has been robbed and likewise to wish to help others when oneself needs help most indeed it is humanly speaking the most hare-brained contradiction that he who literally hath not where to lay his head that he about whom it was spoken truly in a human sense behold the man that he should say come hither unto me all ye that suffer i shall help now examine yourself for that you have a right to do you have a right to examine yourself but you really do not have a right to let yourself without self-examination be deluded by the others into the belief or to delude yourself into the belief that you are a christian therefore examine yourself supposing you were contemporary with him true enough he alas he affirmed himself to be god but many other madmen had made that claim and his times gave it as their opinion that he uttered blasphemy why was not that precisely the reason why a punishment was threatened for allowing oneself to be aided by him it was the godly care for their souls entertained by the existing order and by public opinion lest any one should be led astray it was this godly care that led them to persecute him in this fashion therefore before any one resolves to be helped by him let him consider that he must not only expect the antagonism of men but consider it well 
even if you could bear the consequences of that step but consider well that the punishment meted out by men is supposed to be god's punishment of him the blasphemer of him who invites come hither now all ye that labor and are heavy laden how now surely this is nothing to run after some little pause is given which is most fittingly used to go around about by way of another street and even if you should not thus sneak out in some way always providing you feel yourself to be contemporary with him or sneak into being some kind of christian by belonging to christendom yet there will be a tremendous pause given the pause which is the very condition that faith may arise you are given pause by the possibility of being offended in him but in order to make it entirely clear and bring it home to our minds that the pause is given by him who invites that it is he who gives us pause and renders it by no means an easy but a peculiarly difficult matter to follow his invitation because one has no right to accept it without accepting also him who invites in order to make this entirely clear i shall briefly review his life under two aspects which to be sure show some difference though both essentially pertain to his abasement for it is always an abasement for god to become man even if he were to be an emperor of emperors and therefore he is not essentially more abased because he is a poor lowly man mocked and as scripture adds spat upon luke eighteen verse thirty two end of the pause part three from preparation for a christian life by soren kierkegaard published in eighteen fifty Translated by Lee M. Hollander in 1923.